Kia ora New Zealand, welcome to Sweet Chain Live. This is episode 72. My name's Matt Drake. I'm joined by the human highlighter, Brady Cush. Good evening, Brady. How you doing, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. It, the weather has been terrible, um, quite frankly, um, and I'm not very happy about that. So, uh, so yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I haven't really seen you out on the course, you know, like playing. I've been sneaking in a few rounds here when the weather clears just enough. It's you know still damp underfoot, but you know, sun is shining for well, sun that we would call here in Wellington. Yeah, you won't have seen me out on the course, um, sadly. Um, such is life. Anyway, um, but we do have a very important show. Uh, coming up tonight. Um, <clears throat> tonight's show, um, as you know, we're, we're going to be talking to uh, the candidates for the New Zealand Disc Golf Board, where um, the AGM for this, uh, for the, for the um, board elections is next Wednesday. It's Wednesday, 7pm. You should have a link in your emails. If you don't have a link in your emails, then that could be either because you're not a member of NZDG, uh, the email went to your spam folder, um, or you uh, didn't get one for another reason, in which case, if you think you should have gone down, then you need to get in contact with um, NZDG, and they'll, 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 they'll sort that out for you, hopefully. Um, what we're going to be doing tonight, we're going to go, go through the hot scores first up. Um, there's been a few hot scores, not many um, around the country, but a few. Um, uh, then we're going to be talking to each of the candidates. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Chris Corbin, um, uh, Charlotte Hona, uh, Andrew Fleming, Bray Marsden and Leon Botter um, uh, about all of the positions that they've, they've gone for. And then at the end, um, we'll give you a little summary about what happens now. So like after you've had a listen to what, what they've got to say, what impact does voting have and how do you uh, and what will happen if you vote a particular way um, or if enough people vote in a particular way, I should say. Um, how does that sound, Brady? Does that sound good, like a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, you know, like kind of talking about how the process because not a, po a lot of people know, you know, like the fact that you get mm. to have a say, you get to choose you know, like the, the future of this sport, you, you know, and, and who represents us uh, and yourself, you know, like when it comes to, yeah, you know, like communications and and outreach and chair and all that good stuff. So, yeah, you know, like we have some great candidates. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to, to chew the fat and ask some questions that, you know, like people have sent in and that people are, are wanting to know. And then, yeah, kind of, you know, like give a little recap and so that people can can make an educated decision and educated choices when it comes to uh, choosing the future board of NZDG. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and um, we'll be uh, doing that, of course, with uh, it, a friend of the show, Thomas Jefferson, said that the, the uh, a well-informed citizenry is the best defence against tyranny. So uh, there we go. Um, hopefully we can provide you with some of that inform information um, on today's show. Anyway, right. Kick us off. Hot scores. South Island. Go. Let's go. Or should we say cold scores this week? I don't know. You know, like they were getting snow down in this part of the country. Mm. Uh, but we will start on the south, Invercargill, Queens Park. We have Jaden Menzies and Russell King coming in at 12 under par uh, for the first hot rounds this week. Up in Dedean at Chingford Park, Harry Fraser and Logan uh, come in with a hot round of minus three. And over in Brockville, Tom McKay doing his thing, shooting five under par for the hot round. Uh over in the gardens into Queenstown, let's go lakeside of the South Island. KJ Carrig comes in at minus nine in the gardens. Uh, and it's always sunny at Tucker's Beach. Quinn comes in at plus two this week. Um, over the Crown Range, Wanaka and Ely Point, uh, Paul McKinnon and Luke Godfrey come in at plus one. Uh, and at Lismore Park, Luke Godfrey again uh, shoots the hot round of minus six. Uh, moving up to the Garden City, Christchurch's own Jelly Park. Uh, Shavsta. Um, put a last name on Udis, please. Uh, comes in at minus six this week. Um, on the short nine hole course, Brooker Ave, Ashton Clark shoots a minus four. Uh, and right next door at Queens Park Reserve, Isa Tufunga comes in at minus five for the hot round this week. Um, rounding out the Garden City at Warren Park, the new 18, uh, Dylan Budgie comes in at minus nine. Um, and last but not least, let's not forget Taylor River Reserve in Blenheim. Andy Clune comes in with a hot round of minus four. Across the strait, Matt, what do we got on the North Island? Um, so something very special happened in Wellington um, this uh, past week. Um, at Baron Paul Flavio Mayorga hit four under par to take out the hot round. Um, he also made his way up to Hikoikoi Reserve um, and tied with Chris Sharp um, in Patoni for uh, a free over par 
for the uh, for the hot round, and then he made his way up to upper hut and hit an impressive one over par as well. So congratulations, Flavio Mayorga, for locking out Wellington. Very good, very good stuff. I think that's the first time that's been done. Shake of the head from you suggests it is. So uh, that is. Uh... <laughs> Dude, I've Very tried good. on multiple weekends to get the hat trick, and someone always pips me on one of the courses. <laughs> Usually it's Sequoia Koi or Harcourt Park. But congratulations, well, Flavio. Well done on the hat trick of Wellington. Indeed, indeed. Um, up to Flaxmere, and it's Chris Clark with one under par who hits the hot round. And at Spa Park Red, Steve Lawson hits four under par. Up to McLaren's, and it's Brad Taylor who hits two over par. And at Henderson, Sam Hitchie and R Richard Waterson hitting uh, 12 under par. So, uh, yeah, so some pretty tough, it's been pretty tough going um, out there. Um, we did have, of course, uh, Sub-Zero, the very aptly named Sub-Zero, <laughs> um, which ha happened last week down in uh, Amarama. Um, uh, D Generation Disc Golf event, first um, event on the Disc Golf Tour, uh, New Zealand Disc Golf Tour. And it was uh, Jay Watkinson who uh, took out the win. Um in a pretty, pretty commanding performance to be to be fair i mean he was going into the last round with a with a six shot lead and then uh um and did everything he could to lose it actually but um in the end <laughs> he tried, tried two shots so uh, so well done to uh to to jay um joseph berry came in second uh, fought back well in the final round with a thousand and nine rated rounds the top round of the weekend actually mm -hmm. uh, and then johnny ferrari in third zach taylor in fourth and ethan stout rounding out the top uh, five. Uh, good to see Haley Flintoff back on the tour as well, um, uh, competing in the uh, FPO division, and she took that out, um, as you might expect. So, uh, so yeah, um, some some pretty good golf to start off the season in what looked like pretty pretty chilly conditions. I'll be honest; I got cold just looking at the pictures. It was uh, it was it was crazy. Oh man, like I was super jealous. I saw all the snow like pre like pre turning. I'm like, oh man, is it gonna stay? Because mm. typically, yeah, that New Zealand doesn't get it down to you know most normal levels. So the fact that they got to play in snow is pretty special. Um, so yeah, you know, <laughs> Morgan, uh, thank you very much for that tropical. Yeah, as, yeah as very much. Mm, indeed. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I was a bit jealous. It looked like it was fun times. But yeah, we should probably crack into these. Uh, who we got? Who, who's let's our crack first in, nominee? Let's crack into the to the meat and bones. But before we do. Um, before we do, um, I, I do have to make it clear, actually, in the interests of transparency and uh, and and kind of fairness, that some of the people that we interview to, uh, tonight are people who I personally and Sweet Chain Music have relationships with. Not those kind of relationships, but in terms of um, <laughs> we, uh, uh, and. <laughs> Andrew Fleming, <laughs> who joins us a bit later, uh, he is uh, a member of Team Sweet Chain, right? Um, and so uh, you, you, people need to be aware of that and people need to know that. He's uh, also the um, MA1 champion for 2021-22 for as well. So uh, so very well done to Andrew. Um, uh, Leon Botter, who uh, owns um, NZDSS, um, and is running for the position of chairman, um, will we'll, we'll get to... Um, um, to that relationship then. But NZDSS do supply Sweet Chain Music with um, some of our stock. Um, so you need to be aware of these things prior to going in um, because, you know, I wouldn't want anybody to make the assumption that um, I, I don't have any relationships with these people already. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, let's kick off. And we're going to start um, by talking um, about an outreach uh, director position. And we're going to start by talking to Chris Corbin. So um, good evening. Hey, to Chris, how are you doing? Let me put you. Hey, how are you going? Are. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Excellent. Excellent. Now, you, you've uh, applied for the position of um, outreach director. Yep. Um, or rather been nominated and seconded, you know what I mean, that that, that whole process. Yep. Um, talk us a little bit, I guess, through the, the most obvious question that comes to comes to mind with, with any of our candidates is 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 why? What's your what's the driving force behind your application? Um I guess I'm already doing it here anyway. You know, like I moved to a town with no disc golf from Auckland uh two years ago. And so mm. everything here has been kind of set up from scratch you know we've got it into a high school we've got it into a intermediate school we've soon to have it in a primary school 
Um, we're now looking at running a youth league. Um, and, you know, the the buzz around disc golf and the amount of people and the, and the different kinds of people playing that, you know, six months ago I'd never heard of the sport um, is quite astonishing, really, here in Blenheim. It's been taken up really well. Um, and I guess having been through that process and kind of been rewarded with how easy it was and how receptive people were to getting um, or allowing disc golf into schools or, you know, I guess planting the seed of the idea with people and then they go away and research it themselves and they go, oh, wow, there's something to this. It's more than just throwing beach frisbees around a park. Um, and there, are, there is actually real skill to it. Mm. Um, once you get that, you know, it's like a, like a teaching mechanism. Once you get people past that understanding block and they, they grasp something, it's a lot easier then to get them on your side. Okay. And so like okay. going forward, you know, like you've had success in Blenheim, you know, like how do you plan to translate that into, you know, like a national outreach director? So like, how do you plan to like grow from small to large? Well, I guess talking to others about how I had success doing it here and making policies around, um, you know, the methods that I used and how we've been successful here and getting into schools and how we plan to build on that success. And once one school has it, you want to do an inter-school competition with another school. So then they need to have it. Um, and it just flows on, you know? So what do you, what do you see as being some of the challenges then between translating a, a, a like a local set of initiatives, if you like, to a national level? Um, well, I mean, I guess every community is different. Every, um, you know, I, I can't necessarily think that what has worked here might, might necessarily work in, um, you know, Gisborne or far north or, you know, one of these other places. You know, I mean, immediately around here, Picton and Kaikoura, I'm now looking to um, and approaching having my strong connection at council approach his other strong connections in other councils. Um, and I've got this guy as an advocate now working on my side as an advocate for disc golf, you know, like, um, and it's been such a huge advantage having that, you know, finally meeting the right guy in council coming up against a wall for so long and dealing with the wrong people. And then by luck, having a meeting with somebody who got behind the idea and who I've dealt with ever since. Um, I think wherever you're doing this, finding that person is, you know, really important. Yeah, because it, it seems that, you know, if you've got that person in your local council, or perhaps you have kids who go to a particular school, so you've got an in or a relationship, at least, with the with the organization there, that's one thing. How, how does how, how um, how's the best way to word this? What, what, what do you need? In order to be able to go into, say, an area of the country that's perhaps underserved by disc golf? Um, and let's take Gisborne as an example for that. Um, the kind of whole Gisborne area is a bit absent of courses and, and disc golf in general. What what would you um, how how would you go about kind of reaching into that part of the country? What what's what what are you what, what are you going to need to well, do that? I mean, within all of these you know governmental and council organisations, there's always um, you know impetus to activate communities to um, you know, sports grants and um, ways to use underutilized space or, you know, there's many, many ways to get your foot in the door and it's finding which door is ajar and then jumping on that, you know, like in this case, it was um, they wanted to use this, they wanted, you know, this dead space to be used. They wanted it to be activated. Um, so that was my end. <laughs> but you know it's different in different places you know like you you go to another place and it's um you know smoking cessation you know getting people fit getting them out active doing new activities um family bonding time you know like disc golf's fantastic for that every take the dog out take the family you know four generations one around the park play disc golf together and so I guess the question for me then, so, you know, like with outreach and, you know, like Matt 
brings up a great example of Gisborne, you know, like they have a course that, you know, has kind of fallen by the wayside of years past, you know, like, are there any regions of the country that you'd love to like reach out to besides, you know, like kind of the close Picton and Kaikoura that you feel that disc golf could, could aid in, in growth in those areas? Well, I mean, everywhere we want, you know, like we want to, I know it's a cliche, but we always say we want to use, follow the model of Finland and, you know, have that kind of saturation and that kind of, um, you know, um, universality of it everywhere. You know, everybody can just pick up a disc and go down to their local park um, and it crosses all age boundaries and all, you know, demographics, if you like. Yeah. And so I guess, well, you know, and, and you talked about, you know, kind of creating policies about going into schools and that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, it's been mentioned on this show in the past that the current NZDG board has been a bit lacking in their res- um, like following through on their responsibilities. So like 12 months from now, if we look back on this show, like what could yeah. we hold you accountable for as the outreach director 12 months from now? Well, I mean, I'd like to say that I'm going to be proactive in going and seeking out um, new avenues to get disc golf into schools and new methods and new, um, you know, teaching syllabus. We should all be kind of working from the same hymn sheet if we're teaching teachers how to teach kids, you know, because in my experience of doing it here, I've done teacher training days who then use their own much more skilled teaching methods to teach the kids. Um, So if you know, us as an organization developed a teacher training syllabus um, that we could use across the board when, you know, like, oh, somebody from, say, Hawke's Bay Club contacts us and say, oh, we've got this school that could be interested. You know, we could send this document that um, lines out, for, you know, new players, kids, step by step, by step um, in layman's terms, not over technical, how to play disc golf, you know? So you, I think you that, wanna... would, that would be a great place to start having, having, you know, a, a, a hymn sheet to work from that we're all singing from. Okay. Any areas of the country that you, you see as kind of low hanging fruit? Um, well, I mean, lower South Island's pretty much covered. I mean, Kaikoura, there's some great spots. Picton, there's some great spots, you know, um, there could be more in, um, you know, Upper Wira Rapper, that kind of area. Anywhere where there's a disc golf vacuum, let's get let's get it into the farthest corners. Um, and recently also in this election, there's been a player motion that's put forward for a paid position to be created for a general manager of New Zealand disc golf. Uh, do you personally, feel, you know, like, do you think that that's a good position to create? I think it's you- a great idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea because it, it takes the the you know onus off one person to kind of hold that up and you know we all, there's lots of people that would be great for that job but they have to want to do it at the end of the day and it can't just be a random it has to be somebody that's um disc golf invested and in our community i think it's been you know like hard going politically wise and ends at dj for a while so it put off a lot of the people that are capable of doing these jobs from wanting to do them. You know, like I think if this, this tenure, if we, you know, get it back on track and make it an attractive proposition and make people want to put their hands up and get involved. Okay. And then I guess one of the kind of last questions for me, you mm-hmm. do happen to is outreach, you know, like you are kind of running against uh, Shyla, you know, like if, if you, aren't successful in your, in your nomination and your bid, you know, like, what can we expect? Will your passion die? Will you still stay in the scene? You know, like what to, uh, oh, you, know? No, not at all. you know, like, like I gave it a good week before putting my hand up, you know, and I didn't know that other people had also put their hand up. Um, I feel like there's other people definitely more capable than me. Um, but nobody else seems to be that keen on getting involved. So rather than see it fall by the wayside, I'd rather put my hand up and give it a go. Okay. I, I wish you the awesome. best. Of, wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Look, um, Chris, thank you. Um, I, it's been it's been interesting um, to get to know you. Um, any 
closing comments you'd like to add for anybody out there? And of course, if anybody's got any questions, pop into the comments now. Um, any anything um, else you'd like to add to, um, to to sway people who might be on the fence still? No, I mean, I think I think most people know me. You know, they know I'm fairly straight up and down the line. If I take something on, I'm going to give it my best. Um, and yeah, I just hope to get everything back on track. Okay. We've got a question from an audience member. Here we go. Um, are you mobile enough uh, to travel and reach all the communities? And how are you planning to spread the word? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I'm... I'm now mobile. I never used to be. <laughs> so, so that's um, a big change. Um, but I mean, a lot of this can be done via the power of the internet, right? You know, it's emails, it's um, reaching out, it's um, doing the legwork and finding who the people are that you need to be writing the emails to and writing those emails. Okay. And finally, I think this is going to be a question that's going to come up quite a bit and um, we'll, we'll cover off probably the reason why it's going to come up quite a bit. Um, at the end um, and that's um, would you consider taking another position on the board so that we have a board um, I don't think my skills are particularly suited to any of those other positions I know treasurer is definitely not my skill set um, and secretary um, probably not either um, outreach was the position that I felt like would be best suited to me and my skill set um mm -hmm. but we'll see how things how it comes out in the wash you know never say never excellent okay um look uh, chris thank you so much for uh, for joining us um this evening um so and and look if we've um if you want to vote for chris then uh, you have that um, option in the emails um, as it comes through. Um, and we're going to um, say thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thank you. Cheers now. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Excellent. Well, we went the wrong way around. Excellent. Right. Now, uh, we would now uh, want to bring uh, Shyla in. Um, unfortunately, um, Shyla is traveling this evening and was going to join us when she'd finished traveling. Um, so we may well go to her a little bit later on. So um, our next guest um, this evening, uh, going for the position of communications director, um, is uh, Andrew Fleming. So uh, good evening, Andrew. Kodakoto. Hi, Matt, and hi, Brady. How are you? I'm good. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm a university student, so the next week is going to be pretty hectic. Uh, you got exams or coursework or I don't know what is involved these days. <laughs> Just a lot of assignments. Yeah, a lot of assignments. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so, kick us off then. Tell us why you want to be the communications director. Um, with all the current NZDG board members stepping aside, it was a uh, big, big worry about what was the future of our organisation. So I decided to step forward. Um, I had Bray approach me and say, could I go for a position? And then I decided I thought I was best uh, positioned to be the communications director. Okay. Um, and you've got a bit of history in communications. A oh, wee bit. Uh, so the first role I took on for as a disc and committee member was doing the likes of the Facebook, uh, the Instagram, communicating with media, newspaper, um, businesses and stuff like that. I've also done a wee bit for table tennis south and I've played a bit of table tennis there in terms of the website development. So yeah, a wee bit here and there. And then are you still currently serving on the Dunedin board? Yeah, so I'm currently, the. this will be my second year as chairperson. So obviously I have a couple of responsibilities, but I've tried to step back where I can so I can better apply myself to this position. So I've stepped back a wee bit from highs into the next year. Um, we're doing a few tournaments, the winter pop-up series. Quick wee plug on the icebreaker, Reggio going this Saturday. So I've stepped back from a couple things there so I can better apply myself. Do you see there being any conflict of interest? I noted that you, you put it on the form. Um, 
with your well, uh, position as chairperson of, of Dunedin? In terms of uh, in terms of the chief person of Dunedin, probably not likely. In terms of where the money of the New Zealand Disc Golf goes, it's not genuinely given to clubs itself. A lot of it goes towards helping players get to tournaments. I mean, that's a struggle. Um, and then just other administration activities. So I don't expect that it'll be an issue, but obviously <laughs> I'd like to recuse myself for that, or potentially if there was something to do with speech chain, I'd recuse myself if necessary. Um, and so tell us about a bit of a, a, a comms plan then. What's your, uh, what's, your, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts there? Look, the problem is, has already been said many times is that there's a disconnect between New Zealand disc golf and the community who play disc golf. And so I'm standing on the trying to re reconnect um, New Zealand disc golf to the community. So that's just being able to talk. So this will be emails, potentially emailing out what we're doing as a board, what we're trying to get up to, because in the last year, a lot of us don't know what the board has got up to. So giving um, good updates on that, there was a, an initiative that took place in the last year for Zoom meetings for a couple um, regarding to some of the tour changes that were happening, but we weren't getting too many people involved. It was mostly you guys, me, Alan, Roberts, and a couple other Dunedin people I tried to drum up. So it's re redeveloping that connection um, for social media itself. We obviously have our Facebook, our website's looking very nice, but we have 500 followers on Instagram I've just looked at and zero posts. That means we're not getting any engagement from there. We don't have a TikTok account. Yes, I'm 21. TikTok <laughs> could be the future, is the future, yeah. arguably. So it's a lot of different things they have to do. And at times, the way for a position like this is to be um, increasing delegation delegations so social media itself it might be hey reaching out to my good mate from Invercargill and saying would you like to do an interview series of all the people around the country on what and what's in their bag and what their past is so it's increasing content there and being so getting more people involved with New Zealand disc golf currently the um, working groups are mostly made up of the board which means they're doing all the jobs. So it's trying to get more people involved, but not trying to have them go, well, I don't want this big task of being a chairperson or being a treasurer. Okay. Well, and then, so, you know, like that, that brings up a good point of, you know, 12 months from now, when we look back, you know, like at, at your tenure, you know, first year as communications director, what can we hold you accountable for? What, you know, like, would you like to put your mark on over these next 12 months? The most important thing for me is regular communication between the board and the members, mostly via email or maybe via Zoom. We'll see how that goes. And then hopefully improving just general social media and website and things like that. Uh, what frequency do you consider to be like good communication? Well, at the moment, there tends to be an email going out to say when's the new tournament going up so potentially i would say at least monthly so but also in those emails when you're talking about the new tournament and when registration's opening up we can talk about how are the divisions going for the new changes roberts has put in on the tour talking about what's happening with our skills programming and where we're going there so probably no more than every couple of weeks in terms of an email but trying to get up maybe weekly kind of posts on Facebook and stuff like that. Okay. Um, in terms of communications outside the organization, um, talk us through, talk us through that. I mean, what, what, what consideration um, have you got for, or have you given to communicating with people who might not be so familiar with disc golf? So, it probably needs to be something um, discussed with the outreach director too, because they're obviously being the outreach to the new communities. <clears throat> so that might be obviously 
the big thing for that is getting disc golf in parks and local parks. That's why you see Christchurch and Invercargill so popular. It's not going to be that important to get a wee article in the back of a newspaper that only people over 50 read these days if there's not a course nearby. So it's a lot of it's talking, and obviously I've had experience, so it's talking with the clubs and how they communicate with um, local media companies and giving them support and ideas when things come up. Okay. Now you... um. There's also on the table for this um, election um, series, there's a uh, member's motion um, which talks about um, the uh, introduction of a paid position um, of, of general manager. Um, are you in favour? I ended up seconding, seconding it, the proposal. So Martin reached out to me and asked would I support it and then that ended up happening. The idea of the proposal when I was talking to Martin about it kind of before it happened is the fact that there could have been potentially no New Zealand Disc Golf Board if no one put their hands up. And so it's making sure that the New Zealand Disc Golf can still function if there was potentially no board. So take carrying out the necessary administration required. The finer details of the, um, the motion would obviously have to be discussed by the board if it goes through. But yes, I am in support of looking at the motion and seeing what we can do. If you look at other sports organizations, they have administration roles. It's normally the probably their first role that they pay for. And obviously as a growing uh, organization in sport, it's something that we need to be looking into. Okay, okay. Um, and finally, um, if you're not elected um, in this uh, round of elections, how how does this affect um, how does this affect you? Well, it would give me more free time. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, obviously, I'm not standing against anyone, and for the most part, obviously, there's a lot of politics in New Zealand. What a lot of people know about, I'm quite neutral. I hope, and so. That should be fine in terms of myself getting through. But at the end of the day, the board, I agree that I believe all the board positions should be filled. Obviously, we have a couple of positions vacant. And so in the constitution, for those unaware, they the main positions of chairperson, secretary and treasurer need to be filled by people on the board. And as you mentioned uh, to Chris, uh, will mean that um, other people on the board will need to step up to do those kind of things. And it's, it is a bit of a trouble because I don't have all those skills to be a treasurer. So it's all about having people involved at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, if people don't vote me in, uh, I would say it's your loss. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. And so, uh, so <clears throat> look, thank you so much, Brady, any further questions for Andrew at all? Uh, no, I think he communicated very well. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Andrew, for for joining us. Very best of luck um, on the <clears throat> on on your running. And again, uh, the position of communications director is either to vote Andrew in or to not vote Andrew in. Um, right. Off we go to our next guest, um, and our next guest um, is running for the position of tour director. Um, a very interesting position and a very important one, um, uh, some would say. Um, and so we welcome, um, good evening, Bray Marsden. Kia ora. Uh, I think you might be on mute, Bray. Yep. Lovely. <laughs> How are you? Oh, not bad, not bad. Just chugging along. The days are mushing together. How are you, boys? Yeah, not bad. Um, not bad, thanks. Um, right, take us through. Why do you want to be the tour director? Because I care. 
more or less. That's that's the bottom line. Um, I've been, I haven't been shy uh, in the past about speaking up when I don't think things are going right or they're not going well. Um, and I care enough to put my hand up for this board and try to keep things moving ahead and making a difference moving forward. That's that's why. Okay. Um, uh, arguably, the the tour director who is leaving Roberts, um, you know, has <clears throat> kind of taken the board almost on his shoulders, you know, and done yep. the most out of anyone over the past twelve months. Um, how do you hope to? Does do you feel he set a good example? Do you feel he didn't set a good example? Like, how do you? Um, what do you hope to bring to the role uh, for the next twelve months? I. I think Robert's kept the entire NZDG afloat by himself for the last 12 months. That's what I think. <laughs> he, um, he's implemented new, new ideas and new things that I don't see a fault with. I don't think many people have seen faults with being the new standards set for tournaments and even this new point system. Um, I, I think Roberts has done a great job and I'm really, really, really disappointed that he's not continuing um, at the end of the day. And if he was, there was no way I'd be running for this position. It's purely because he's not and somebody has to that cares. Okay. Um, okay. You bring up a good point uh, with uh, the, the tour standards that he brought in. And I noticed in your manifesto, you kind of talked about that of, um, you know, yep. like kind of maintaining those standards and like holding tournament directors and, and tournament events to account. Um, you know, like yep. how do you plan to like enforce those uh, like the standards that he's brought in? And, you know, like what will happen if like tournament events or tour directors aren't kind of following those standards? Uh, I need to get to these events um, to do that. I think I, I, I can judge it off player feedback and um, uh, footage and all those sorts of things. But if I can get myself to these events, I can assess how they run more or less and like the quality and the standards of the, like everything from, you know, the tee pads to the player etiquette to the professionalism and all those sorts of things. And the accountability side of it sort of comes into it that like, Tournaments are great, and the more tournaments, the better, but not every single tournament needs to be on the tour, and we're starting to see that now anyway um, with all these events popping up that, you know, they don't need to be on the tour. They can have standalone events and still sell out, and I think if we can keep a bit of uh, specialty or, you know, something along those lines to events purely on the tour, um, they will only be there though if they can be run at a standard worthy of having NZDG support. Okay, okay. You talked about um, the TD standards um, that that Roberts has kind of introduced. What are the most important ones for you? Uh, man, everything like string lines for OBs. T pads, the quality of them, like player footing and all that is important. Uh, and I can't even remember what else was in there now, like off the top of my head, but just just the little things and how what he was suggesting falls into the line of PDGA standards anyway. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. we've New Zealand's just sort of been cruising along at its own standard to be fair um and it's, it's time to change that well and i guess you know we've talked about roberts leaving his mark you know like in, in setting those standards in the beginning like how do you uh over these next 12 months like what's going to be bray's mark how are you going to improve upon like what robert's done you know like what are we going to be able to hold you accountable for 12 months from now um like doing the work what the accountability as I mentioned in my candidacy, goes both ways. Like it's not a position of power where you go and 
big little TDs and events because they're not up to scratch. It's about helping them get to that standard. And if I'm not doing that as the national tour director, then I shouldn't be in that position. I should be asking them, what do they need? How can I help? Are you not sure about this sort of thing? You know what I mean? And I want that to be my mark. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be known to everybody, the mark that I leave or create. It's about just building, building that relationship, as I said, and supporting the TDs to boost their events up to that standard that we all want to see. I mean, you, you talk a lot about professionalism in your manifesto. Yep. Um, what does professionalism mean to you? It means a, it means, it means a few things. Uh, prizes, payouts, um, dress code, uh, etiquette around the tournaments, just those sorts of things. I would say more like the, the prizes, the payouts, and all that sort of stuff. Um, we're seeing tournaments run, having pro divisions and receiving the minimal cash or vouchers, you know, to pro division players playing playing and placing well. And Is, Isn't that down to the size of the field, though, largely? I don't remember the last time we even had a tournament under 72. Are you meaning no, in mean, the pro I mean, field? The, yeah, the, the size yep. of the pro division. Uh, it, it does come down to that, but there's still a percentage that needs to be paid out regardless of the size of the division. Okay. It comes down to uh, Brady, uh, Brady, who's been a TD, will adhere to this. The percentage of the payouts differs on the uh, tier and... Uh, the percentage of the entry fees per player for that division differ to the to the payouts versus how much you actually have to inject yourself into the payout, and I, I don't see that a hell of a lot. Okay, okay, and I guess that's something that you can hold TDs accountable for. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, um, but not in a, no, it doesn't even have to be in a bad way. That can be in a good way, like. I don't know what the bloody financial situation is of NZDG, but if there's not enough money in the pro pool, in the prize pool, you know, TDs can ask for some, or you know, I would like TDs sorry to be able to ask for some to help bump them up to where that needs to be. It doesn't. It's not. I feel like it's coming across like a do 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 you 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 thing, but it's it's not. It doesn't need to be. Okay. Um, we okay. mentioned it a little bit with Andrew, the idea of conflict of interest and, you know, like that he's part of Team Sweet Chain, that he's, you know, like part of, uh, you know, like running Dunedin, you being on Team NZDSS, you being a part of like Disc Golf South. Uh, is there any conflict of interest there? How do you plan to handle that, you know, like uh, if you're successful in being nominated? Uh, if I'm successful, I'd, I went for this role without – the DSS thing even there that's when it comes to this sort of thing that's irrelevant to me um the Disc Golf South thing I have three years of being part of the committee for Disc Golf South so I'm used to meetings and like proper situations where you have to discuss things and talk and blah 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 and conflict of interest to do with that I don't I don't see it being a problem I see it as somebody who's had a baby step into this sort of position um in a way like a you know a community body going into a, a governor national body sort of deal okay um one of the things that um that roberts did is is he kind of re rejigged the the tour and and kind of made it start in the middle of the year and instead of on a kind of calendarically um yep. Can you can you see any kind of uh, which was quite which is what I'm going to call a relatively big change, right? To the to, to the way the tour was run. I mean, I'm that's what I'm considering for the purposes yeah. of this question. I'm yeah, considering yeah, yeah. that to be a big a big change. What what kind of big changes would would you consider or indeed rule out um, over the next year? I hadn't. Genuinely, just hadn't even thought that far ahead yet. Um, it's hard. It's hard to like. I've thought of heaps of ideas, but I don't want to get in over my head before I've even been elected yet. If if that makes sense. Um, 
I do. I did find the the season starting in June to be interesting. Um, not not bad, not bad in any way. And changes change regardless whether it's good or bad. But I I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I don't want to go back and change things again in that regard. Um, we'll give it a year or two, if you know what I mean. Like this is the first season now. I think. Um, I might be the second one, sorry, but because we've had the crossover seasons, but <clears throat> I I like it. It's a couple winter tournaments. Uh, oh, sorry, it might be three or four winter tournaments. Um, that helps everybody get – they're in different locations of the country. Everybody gets a little bit of a kickstart. And then we move through the summer months, which does align with uh, the States and Europe for our touring players if they're ever in the country and we have events over that November, December, January, February period. I know I think that was part of it uh, as well, but I, I like the idea. Uh, just quietly, we've had interest already from uh, America and Australia and stuff and Europe for nationals, so it worked. Um, we've got a question from the audience. Um, yep. So this question comes from Sue Brown. Um, which is, can I ask if you've uh, thought about how you could support TDs to help reduce the amount of drug and alcohol that is still present at certain tournaments during play? That's crazy. I was actually just talking about this before. Um, I'm, uh, I like, I like a drink. Don't get me wrong, but the, uh, I don't see moving forward uh, the tour events and whatnot. We could definitely uh, skip out on the the drug use around them and especially with more juniors starting to filter into these events like it's, it's a horrible look uh not a big fan of it just like weed it's pretty much you know it's the dominant one is weed around tournaments um i get i fully understand that people want to have a smoke and stuff but between rounds no nah, not not a good look uh i've i remember there was talk once about a drug policy for the tour I think that's a little bit excessive, but it, it's not far off with the way the the, uh, the sport and the the game's moving. And well, the PGA I, the PGA already has a drug policy, right? That applies to yeah. any sanctioned event, and it's not an it's not one of these optional ones that New Zealand can kind of decide to do if it wants to or not. It, it's a it's Ooh, a you have to yeah. do it everywhere, right? You don't have a choice. I think the question um, was more about how can you help TDs. people to. How can you help <clears throat> TDs in particular to not reduce have it, it present in re yeah, or reduce yeah. it, reduce it during um, TDs? You've got the mechanism, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. TDs have that power themselves. Uh, I've seen it implemented before during a tournament where someone was caught using during a round, gone instantly. Um, the support for TDs. I guess the person to, to back up the TD, that person could be banned or barred from future events for a while. It doesn't have to be a permanent thing, no way, like a strike system almost. Um, you know, one strike, you're out for the next three to four uh, sort of tournaments and whatnot. But it's, it's, I just seen Dylan's comment roll through, and it is a tough conversation to have sometimes, and it's it is quite hard to um, to even start it, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not afraid to talk. Whatever's just sitting there, and if like if something wasn't wrong, like if I caught somebody at an event that I was running, that they, they, they wouldn't have a chance. Um, and you can take it further for the TDs. I can, being the tour director. It's not quite the same as being the PGA representative of New Zealand, but being the tour director, I can help them go to the PDGA for what to do or how to deal with it, especially if it if it didn't end passively. Because just staying on this subject, because you're, you're right, it's a tough conversation, right? People won't call yeah. foot faults, let alone I can tell um, you know, rat on someone if they've if they've caught smoking or drinking. So it's it's one of the, it's one of those that that is going to be a, a a tough conversation. I guess is there anything we can do so that 
it, the conversation doesn't have to happen in the first place, right? Is there anything kind of preemptive that can we have to, we have to layer so, so that you so that it doesn't even become a thing, so that you know the alcohol just isn't brought to the the alcohol is kept in the car to have a few drinks at the end of the day, and people just don't bring the weed. What is is there is there a is there a way or anything we can do to for for that to be the that for, for that? And you know, I th does the tournament director think, have any input in that? I think the only way would be a, a nationwide policy, uh, right off the bat. That's a, that's a blanket. It would be a blanket rule for all NZDG events. Um, sort of like smoking and vaping during your round. Like if it's if it's going to cover one, it's probably going to have to cover all. Um, Yeah, I, I think the only way would be a nationwide policy from the NZDG for all NZDG events. If you're going to be flying under that flag, you would. It would be a policy in line with um, New Zealand sport around drug and alcohol use at events, and then helping the TDs implement that as as a whole, like not not this individual stuff. Yeah. Well, that kind okay. of brings up a good point, you know, like you talk about having hard conversations, you know, like in, in being a, a tour director, you kind of have to make some tough calls. Uh, what are potential challenges you feel uh, would be in this role over the next 12 months? You know, like, is there anything that, you know, that you'd, you'd love help on that you're looking to have the board to do? Uh, you know, like what's going to be challenging for you in this role? Getting into it. <laughs> um i think the most challenging thing will be proving that what i set out to do is getting done and then dealing with um certain like it's not a voodoo thing just dealing with certain people that have um bad history with certain people and all those sorts of things. I don't, I'm not going to go much further than that, but just trying to rebuild some relationships that aren't quite there. Um, not for anyone else other than myself for the role, because the players deserve that. And I don't want to let you know, a few bad eggs or whatever get in the way of actually growing the sport more. And I think Roberts has done that well. Um, because Roberts is a get along with everybody sort of guy, whether it be very abrupt and straightforward or, you know, friendly as your friend, you know, he gets he gets it done and I want to carry that on. Rebuild, rebuild some uh fires that have been put out and whatnot. Okay. Excellent. I think um, that would be the hardest part. So to answer your question, I think that'll be the hardest part is rebuilding some fires. One of the um, one of the questions we've asked uh, our other our other guests. You can probably guess what's coming. Um, there's a, a members motion for a paid uh, general manager position um, at NZDG that's been put forward. Um, what's your stance on it? Not a fan of it. I I don't believe there is a need to have a position for a play a paid role on the board to monitor people doing their roles if the people that are actually applying for these roles do their job or you know care enough to actually put in some effort um i haven't been quiet about the fact that the last 12 months have been pretty abysmal uh from that in that regard it would have been a really good role to have 12 months ago um i don't think it's necessary i don't think it's necessary yet <clears throat> Uh, with a new board hopefully coming to the forefront and let's see if we can hold them accountable first before we go and start uh, spending some money that NZDG doesn't have yet. I think he was, I think the motion was uh, asking for $50 an hour for 60 hours work in a 12 month period to just supervise. I don't think that's uh, necessary yet. Just uh, playing devil's advocate for a moment. The um, uh, if given that the there's not a position that no one has run for the position of treasurer, and of the guests we've spoken so far have kind of made it uh, 
pretty clear that they don't consider themselves to have the skills uh, required to be treasurer, then doesn't this? Because I mean, the, the the when I when I saw the general manager, I said, well, that's that's that overlaps with the treasurer role quite a lot, yeah. right? There's there's quite a bit of overlap there for me. Um, so doesn't this solve the problem in part of having a of of of, of closing the gap on some of those skill shortages in a way in a way i guess it does but you're also going to have a position or somebody's going to have a position on the board where they're receiving financial benefit for volunteer work and the other ones aren't okay i'm not sure it's a board position so i don't think it uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I, oh, yeah you're right it's not but um a part in the board sorry with with financial benefit it might create a bit of division it might not um the treasurer role uh would definitely be suited to somebody with more monetary skills than myself. Um, I like buying too many discs, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, like it, it, it's a role that requires a sensible, professional, mental attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I guess a general manager does fall that does fall into the line with with what was being asked of, but. I, I just think it's yep. a not yet sort of deal. Okay. Okay. Um, lovely stuff. Brady, anything further? Well, I was going to say, yeah, Brady, do you have any kind of like closing remarks or anything or like anything to kind of like sway or tilt people like <clears throat> to your side of the fence? Uh, I just hope that the the people that get to vote, so the players, you know, my mates, card mates, all that sort of deal, vote with the head um more or less i know that no but i'm running opposed uh similar to andrew but you know there's six seven hundred people now i think that are part of the nzdg and four and a half of us five of us put our hands up so somebody had to care enough and i hope that people understand that and say money where the mouth is time come on let's show us what you've got Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Well, look, best of luck, Bray. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, this, um, in this election cycle, you can uh, vote for Bray or not um, in the um, email that you, that you received. So um, very best of luck. We'll hear from you again. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Cheers Bray. Bray. Whew, right. We're rattling through these at quite a pace. We've not, still not heard from Shona. No, nope, no, Shyla yet? Okay. From Shyla, sorry, I'm just going to check my messages actually, just to check that um, nothing's come through. It hasn't yet, um, uh, which would be un unfortunate. She, she did say she was uh, she was travelling, and obviously she does a, um, a a pretty important job. So I, you know, we'll we'll if we can't hear from her, then I would encourage you to go and read her manifesto, which is uh, on a link that was sent to your to your email uh, recently. Um, and also um, reach out to her if you're still not sure um, before the voting closes on Tuesday. So um, finally, um, we bring on um, the uh, only person who has applied for the position of chairperson. Um, and so um, good evening, um, Leon Botter. Good evening, Matt. Hey, Brady. Thanks for having me on. Um, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, a little bit uh, approaching this with a bit of trepidation, but at the same time excitement. So let's, uh, let's see what next year brings. Trepidation? What, so, what trepidation do you have? Well, the trepidation is, is that um, when uh, Matt got hold of me for doing this evening, I was seriously thinking about why I actually decided to stand for this position. And one of the things I said to Matt was, I don't really want to speak too much about the existing board um, because, well, nobody really wants to bag anybody else. I don't think it's, it's the right way to go. But listening to the other candidates, they've they've pretty much raised pretty much what everybody really knows. And um, it's tough because I have my opinions on those too. And everybody knows I am very opinionated and very outspoken. Um, I'm not the most popular guy in disc golf and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I've, I've largely been involved in a lot that's uh, gone on in, in, in disc golf in, uh, in New Zealand. And um, so this is a point that comes with a lot of responsibility, but also um, I've, I've also have to lead by example. 
And uh, one of those would be one of reconciliation amongst everybody and to, to, to get uh, New Zealand Disc Golf united again. Um, there's a couple of questions you're probably going to ask me and I'll, I'll answer them when, when you ask. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a job I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, should I be voted in. Um, but uh, if, if uh, I'm no Paul Deacon, um, um, you know, he's done, he's done a lot of hard work for, for NZDG in the past, and he's done most of the boring stuff, if you want to put it that way. Um, basically, what Bray has said, what uh, Andrew has said, and Chris, um, we've just got to now implement all of that and uh, get New Zealand disc golf where it actually needs to be. Okay, right. Well, you talked about um, some of the obvious questions. Let's deal with the elephant in the room, shall we? Um, you run uh, NZDSS. You're the uh, director on NZDSS, which is uh, a, a retailer that supplies um, some of the um, uh, vendors around the country. Um, let's, including uh, Sweet Jam Music, um, <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about how the com how 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 this conflict might you know how do you how do you stop it being a conflict or do you even see it's a conflict um you know i've i've one of the things i've been outspoken about is anybody sitting on the board that has any financial interest in disc golf i don't think it's 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 proper and it's right um because it just it it just needs to it just you, you know you're not only uh, there's a there's a a biblical principle of not only should you not sin but you should also avoid the perception of sin and nobody can point a finger of you saying you're financially gaining from anything because well you you, you don't own any business in this um but at the same time um it's also in this where new zealand disc golf is right now i think it's a plus um because it's it's something i've been heavily involved in um, I did take uh, some time off last year uh, during COVID just to get out of the politics and, and, and get away from everything so that I could kind of get some perspective. And I've come back uh, this year and not much has changed. Um, same old, same old is on the go. And for those reasons, I, I never stuck my hand up. And as a matter of fact, if, uh, if it, the deadline was not extended, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. But uh, on Thursday, on my drive down to uh, Amarama for uh, Sub-Zero, I was just having a chat with uh, Lorraine and um, I was, you know, we were just discussing this and what would happen with uh, uh, New Zealand disc golf if we didn't have a board. And uh, I think Andrew's answered a lot of those questions tonight about the motion that was put forward. Um, and that kind of it makes me, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why they would put such a motion forward unless they were fully expecting the board to fall over. Um, that's not the case. Um, uh, I, I've, I've, I've been in business for, for 30 odd years. I've been pretty successful, even if I say so myself. And I want to tell you right now, um, if I'm elected as chairman, um, we have a secretary waiting in the wings. We have a treasurer waiting in the wings. Um, and that will be discussed and an SGM will be held. And I have uh, some people that, that are prepared to, to step up um, who are just, you know, people didn't stand up before because of who was on the board. And that's just that's just how it is. Um, you know, um, so I'm hoping that that I will be something that uh, people will be able to say yes. As with regards to mitigating um, conflict of interest, conflict of interest is is an interesting one um, because I would need to financially gain from a decision made by the board or by myself in my role as chairman for the NZDG. Now, considering that this is not uh, NZDSS is not the only business I'm involved with, I, I own another business. Um, so it's not where I make my money from. Um, it has turned out just to be, it's been a business of, of servitude. Um, we have served the disc golf community with NZDSS and um, it's an ethos that uh, Iran and I have, have really embraced and we've, we've made disc golf uh, accessible, uh, the products. Um, we have, I think at the last count, we were probably the, the largest contributor to competitions um, and the likes. So. You know, it's for 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 me. Um, when it comes to a decision like that, it's not difficult for for me to just bow out. I mean, everybody on the board knows my interests. If there's a tender going in for a golf course or what have you, those tenders will all be welcome. It's very possible that uh, NZDSS might tender for it. 
Um, but at the same time, when it comes to make a decision of who's awarded that tender, I'm not involved in that process. So it's a pretty transparent way of going about things. Um, what didn't happen in the past was that not everybody knew about these things. Um, things were just done very quickly. And that's that's not my intention of, of how I, I intend to run the NZDG. This will be a very, very, very transparent organization. People will know who we are. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not concerned about that at all. And I, I was mm. called out by um, Carl Martin in the week, um, basically giving me his opinion, which to be very fair, I valued. I want people to come out and, and, and give me the negative feedback or what's perceived as negative feedback because it allows us the opportunity to answer these things. And this is nothing, something we've never been able to do with the previous board. You know, they've pretty much been over there and disc golfers have been down here. And that's, that, that to me is, is, is not how this works. We, we work for disc golfers. NZDG is here to serve the disc golf. Okay. So talking about the transparency that you've, that you've just mentioned, we've got a question from the audience is who else are we voting for? If we vote yes to you, um, that's completely dependent on whether I'm voted in, and the the members will have the opportunity to say yes or no. That's why it's going to a, a, a special general meeting. It won't be me dictating those positions, but I have been approached by members of the disc golfing community that have said to me, in no uncertain terms, um, I'm somebody that they would love to work with in in furthering the sport. Just like I think Brace said it best, um, we care. We give a damn about this sport. You know, we're not in this for, for money. We're not in this for personal glory. We are in this because we love a game and, mm -hmm. and, and we want everybody to be a part of it. And we don't feel that the previous NZDG board has been representative of the passion that this group of people you've got in front of you right now has. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the things you talked about in your manifesto and one of the things that you agreed with the other candidates when they mentioned it was about engaging with the disc golf uh, community in New Zealand, bringing together the local clubs, suppliers, uh, vendors, media teams, anybody who's got a kind of a hand in disc golf. You also say in your manifesto, and I quote, change does not come without cracking a few eggs. Yep. And I guess I, what I want to know is how do, you, how do you intend to bring people together if you're... Um, if you're, if you're, if if perhaps you've got an ability to rub people up the wrong way, I don't perhaps have that ability. I absolutely have that ability to rub people up the wrong way. That's that's no secret. But you know the thing is, you when it comes to to business, I see the NZDG in in not as a, so much as a business, but I, I, you've got to approach it with a business mindset. And um, I have clients uh, that are very big clients of mine, and we don't necessarily see eye to eye on everything. However, what we are uh, united by is the uh, uh, chance to make money and um, so we never go out to dinner together but we definitely do business together and it's the same when it comes to clubs and when it comes to disc golfers when it comes to uh, uh, the vendors that are, are, are in New Zealand now I'm not asking you to like me but I am asking is that we you know we we go forward together at the moment everybody's doing their own thing and they're doing great things I mean it's no secret, you know, um, Hayden Shaw and myself, we don't get on. And that's fine. You know, it's a personality clash, call it what you like. But that man puts so much effort into disc golf, I will slap anybody that tries to knock that man down when it comes to the amount of effort he puts into disc golf and growing the sport in this country. He does an excellent job. And that's what we're trying to achieve, is to get everybody up to those levels, the same levels that Disc Golf South do with uh, the Southern Smash. We want those competitions everywhere and the only way we're going to get that is if we start talking to each other instead of taking everything so damn personally and start looking at the greater good and that's what it's really about you know it's it's are our goals united yes they are okay then we're going to sit down i mean i'm not asking you for your hand in marriage i'm asking you to help me take this golf and and make it what it's supposed to be so that, that, that brings up a great question and, and I'll ask kind of specifics to that of you mentioned Hayden, you know, like in being, you know, like another mover and shaker in the, in the yeah. New Zealand community. Sure. And so, you know, like if he's setting a great standard and, and putting stuff out, you know, like if you're chairman, how do you plan to kind of build that bridge to establish those relationships with those people you may have ruffled their feathers with, you know, like how do you plan to be that leader of every, like how, what steps do you plan to take to bring the community together to move it forward? There we go. 
by putting my money where my mouth is. You know, the thing is, um, like I said, uh, having a conflict of interest is also a plus because I talk to everybody. I have relationships all around New Zealand within the disc golfing community, and that's from club chairmen to the, the local the local player. Um, and I also have some international contacts, uh, very good ones and very big ones. And um, so by basically doing what we said we were going to do, um, one of the big things that a lot of uh, clubs have said is that they've got no involvement from NZDG. There's no support. There's no guidance. Um, the drug policy is a perfect example of that, that nobody knows what to do. And the thing is, we do know what to do because, as Matt pointed out, the PDGA has made it pretty clear. The difference is we need to get rid of some ambiguity that's involved with that law. So when we've approached a TD in the past uh, about somebody smoking weed um, uh, during a tournament, they said, well, that's between rounds. We can't police people that do things between rounds. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you know, coming from a professional sporting background, um, that's box. From the day that, that from the time that that tournament starts to the time the prize giving is over, there's no drugs. There's no, you know, you, you want to go and have a drink in the evening by all means. But if you're going to get drunk, there's a problem. And we, and that's what 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 comes back to what Matt was asking earlier on about professionalism. You know, we want the world to take us seriously. We want disc golf to be mainstream. We want people that when we say to them, "Oh, we play disc golf," we want people not to go. A, we want them to look at us and go, wow. But the thing is, how's that going to happen if we don't carry ourselves mm -hmm. like professional disc golfers? If we don't behave like that, if we don't look like that, if we don't talk like that, if it looks like a duck, quacks like one and walks like one, then it must be one. And that's what we need to communicate to all the clubs and support them. And that's what I want NZDG to do for this next year is be careful what you asked for. You might just get it. We will support the clubs. And from what I've seen from the board candidates that have that have stood up tonight, these guys will do it. They absolutely will do it because they've got a passion for it. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about uh, uh, the NZDG's actions going forward. The guys will definitely do their roles. And um, the clubs, the TDs, TDs in particular will get that support. Um, and I have very different ideas of how to go about that. But these are mine, and I will put that to the board to, to for them to agree on should I be elected. And I think that um, everybody around the country will probably be pleasantly surprised by the NZDG actually doing what it was designed to do. Um, so, I have a question concerning uh, other chairs and like that kind of stuff. And you <clears> talk <throat> about people putting their money where their mouth is um, and that idea of if – uh, Hayden or um, let's say, you know, like Simon Feezy from RPM Discs, you know, like if one of the other big movers and shakers who also, you know, like has has money in the game, as it were, would you vote and support their candidacy for chair uh, or like in running against you? Of course. Of course. My big question is, why didn't they? Okay. It's that simple. I mean, ultimately, the, the whole reason I stood for chairman is because nobody else did. And like Bray and like uh, uh, Andrew, at the end of the day, we cannot afford, I mean, I have relationships with people overseas, big companies overseas, big disc golfers overseas. And I would be very embarrassed to have a conversation with him next, you know, after the elections that the NZDG has fallen over. I mean, how embarrassing would that be for us as a community? And we should take it as an embarrassment. But we need to engage. We need to engage uh, uh, clubs. We need to engage TDs. We need to engage uh, uh, members. Which is why I've made a commitment to make myself 100% available. And um, and that's I think that's what is required. And I know it's going to be a pain in the bum. But at the end of the day, if that's what we need to do, uh, then then so be it. And so what what can we expect? Um, you know, a year down the line, what what is it? What what's going to be your mark? What can you kind of say? These are these are my achievements. It's a, a question that we that we asked last year, um, and we're asking it again this year. Yeah. Um, so one of the, the the things that I'm I'm really really keen on is to put New Zealand disc golf on the map, not only for New Zealanders but for international. So international players will want to come here. So far, in in in, in talking to 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 these guys. 
Um, they are keen, but there's always been something underlying why they haven't basically arrived. And I think if we, if we as a community, as a disc golfing community, not just the <clears throat> but we as a community can step up and say, hey, this is who we are. And we can show that through our leadership, show it through our examples. I think that'll be an amazing accomplishment in itself in getting these players here. And there's a few people in this country that can absolutely help the NZDG board make that happen. Um, relationships that I have. And uh, I think that's that's important. But I suppose what I would like to leave behind um, uh, in a year's time is that we have a united disc golfing community. I think that to me is the most challenging thing to do because everybody has varying opinions, personalities and the likes. And that is something that I would really like to do. But I would like to leave the sport being absolutely professional and on a par with the European and American standards of how tournaments are run, how players get into the tours, um, and sort of what policies and procedures are in place so that there is no difficult conversation to have with your fellow disc golfer, that uh, everybody knows what to expect when they go to a tournament. Everybody knows that when they're paying 50 bucks, that's what they're going to get. If they're paying 100 bucks, that's what they're going to get. So, so to set a standard that is uh, easy to follow um, is, 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 is not impossible. Um, and that basically uh, people just, just feel like they are part of something bigger than themselves. So how far kind of into the future are you looking? And Morgan raises a good question here. Like, um, are you looking for a for a one year or for a longer term? Is this, are you coming in to fix something and then it's like, I've done my bit? Or are you going, actually, I want to be around for a while? You know, if, I hate not finishing things. And I would only, re, I would only stand again if I have achieved 90% of my target. And my target will be made known within 30 days um, of being elected. So you will get an absolute list of what I plan to achieve for the year. And you will get quarterly uh, uh, reports on that, whereby you can actually ask me yourself if you're not in my area. Um, and you can say, right, what's happening with this? What's happening with that? And that's what I'm talking about is basically putting myself out there. Um, we at Sub Zero, nobody even knew who the chairman was of the NZDG as it stands right now. And that to me is insane. It is absolutely nuts that, that somebody would ask a question like that. It's the governing body of New Zealand disc golf. It's, it's the most important organization in disc golf in New Zealand. And people don't know who they are. They don't even know what they do. That, that to me is, is unacceptable. So if I achieve 90% of my goal, um, then uh, definitely... Uh, uh, I will run again. But if I've completed it, I, I can tell you now, I will support anybody that would run against me. I will definitely not abandon ship. If nobody else stands, I'll stand again. But if we've got, like Simon Feezy or Hayden Shaw or somebody that's capable of, of taking it over, I'll support them 100%. And so, quick question. Do you know who the chairman of the PDGA is? Who the chairman of the PDGA is? Yes. No, no idea. Cool. Just checking. You're a PDGA um, member, though, yes? Oh, I am. Okay, cool. So we live by, 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 by we live by their rules, and they, at the same time, um, it's it's important that that uh, they, as an organisation, are also made known to uh, uh, um, to New Zealand disc golfers. I think that's important as well. Um, and not only that, if if they feel that they have uh, anything to go, <coughs> people don't even know that Simon Feezy is the, the the PDGA uh, rep in New Zealand. So we need we need to make that kind of information known, and the fact that I don't know is is terrible. I should know. We I, I should have it rammed down my throat through regular communications from the NZDG. So, good point, Brady. Well, and I um, guess you mentioned it briefly, and I just kind of want to ask what it what it means for you. You talk about you want to bring more unity to the national body. Um, you know, like twelve months from now, what does that look like for you? What's a more unified body look like? In the eyes of Leon. Okay, a more unified body will come down to things like support. So I'll give you an example. Um, if uh, uh, I don't know, somebody wants to run a competition in, in Matt, you want to run a competition in Wellington, right? Our tournament director will get a hold of you. Matt, you're running your competition in two weeks' time. Are you ready? No, nope, I don't have flags. I don't have this. I still need that. I'm struggling with that. That'll come straight back to me. And because I am aware of uh, and know a lot of people that want to support disc golf, I can then start making some phone calls and go, right, 
tournaments going up in Wellington in two weeks' time, we need. And we will phone other clubs. And other clubs will come to your to your aid and say, hey, we've actually got this gear. We're happy that you have it. We have nothing on on that weekend. That, to me, is where unity comes from, where it's not every little competition for themselves. We are all working together to make each other's competitions bigger and better. And I think that's what it's about. And if, if you come down to the South Island, you will see that that actually happens, uh, where we, we share the gear um, and, and we lend it to each other for our various events um, to make them better and look more uh, uh, um, sort of like a competition and not just somebody throwing out in a field with a basket at the end of it. So we do help each other out, but I want that to extend nationwide um, in that regard. And when somebody's got an issue, I want people to step up. I want people to go, hey, we'll help him out, you know, and not rely solely on the NZDG to just, you know, if we've got a little bit of money left in the um, in the account to to help with travel and everything like that. We're, we're an all-inclusive community, you know, but over the last few years, that seems to have fallen apart. You know, it's... Uh, that's not the disc golf I fell in love with. You know, there's nowhere in the country that I can go where I'm not going to have a bed. I always have somewhere to stay. That should be true for every disc golfer. Okay. Do you have any final things, Matt? Uh, yeah, just the um, there's the members uh, motion. Um, just to get your thoughts on the members motion um, that's good, that's going through about a having a, a general manager um, for New Zealand disc golf. Uh, where do you stand on it? Well, again, so the general manager position, I, I, I don't think, uh, I, I appreciate what, what Martin was trying to do with that. Um, I don't see anything sinister with that thing, so don't misunderstand me. Um, but I don't believe that, that that is necessary if everybody on the board is doing their job. And that's what we volunteered for and all the rest. If you want to earmark some money, uh, what I am in favor of is not paying anybody a salary but definitely contributing towards board members' uh, expenses. Expenses that are uh, transparent. So, for example, Bray mentioned that he's going to go to that competition. Then I want to, I'm, not, I'm not saying we pay his entrance fees, but what I am saying that if he needs to drive from Invercargill and come go all the way up to Blenheim to go and, and support Chris in an event, I think we should cover uh, NZDC GGs to cover his, uh, his, his travel. Um, and whatever other minor expense he might have up there. But that will be there for everybody to see. He's not staying in a five-star hotel. He's not uh, renting a Mercedes-Benz. Um, and that will be there to, for, for everybody <clears throat> to see. And anybody can ask at any time, I would like to see Bray's expenses for last month, please. And the board must provide it. Um, I, I would support that. If, if Chris Corbin needs to do an outreach and he needs to go uh, to, to the West Coast or what have you, um, I, I think then yes, money should be available for, for those expenses to be covered. Um, and that will definitely alleviate a lot of the stress for, for, for members doing their job. So I would absolutely support that. But having a general manager uh, I, I, or any paid member of the board, no, I don't support that. Okay, excellent. Um, any final uh, comments um, from yourself that, um, that you, you'd like to... Give the audience uh, in support of your application. I've been, as I've said before, I've, I've been in business a long time. And I've been pretty successful at it. And I've done it through basically amalgamating partnership <clears throat> relationships with people. Because at the end of the day, myself on my own, I'm going to accomplish absolutely nothing. It is a team effort. It's a very cliche thing to say. I said it in my my my, my little mission statement. It is it is in my manifesto. It's a it's a cliche thing to to say. But it's a team. But it's not just the team of the NZDG. It's a, it's it's a team of everyone. And as Bray pointed out, you know we've got more than 500 members. And when it comes to something as important as these elections. Um, there's not that very many people that stepped up and said, hey, and I can tell you now, there are qualified people within our community that can probably do this job better than I can. We've got much more experience and much better relationships than I have with people. So at the end of the day, regardless of what you may think of who, who, me personally, um, at the end of the day, you, you need to vote with your head. And if you want disc golf, New Zealand disc golf to, to be there, 
um, and to represent New Zealand, not just in the uh, in New Zealand itself, but also to be the face of, of New Zealand disc golf to the international market, <coughs> then you can't go wrong. I, I think I've, I've, I've done enough in, uh, uh, and helped enough with, uh, with disc golf here for, for people to at least credit me with that. Um, as for my stunning personality, well, that's always up for debate. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, very best of luck um, on uh, the election next week. Um, and yeah, look, we'll, we may have you back um, on the show, I'm sure, if you get, um, if you're elected. Um, very best of luck. Um, thanks, thanks for having me. On. Cheers, Leon. Cheers, appreciate it. Thanks. Whew. Right, there we go, Brady. That's everybody. Um, well, everybody... Shyla, we've not been able to get hold of Shyla, unfortunately. Um, she she was traveling in the deep south, um, so can understand why um, connection um, issues might have occurred. Well, she's probably um, in Omarama, you know, so she's connected, but not to us. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, so yeah, look, uh, that we've we've been through a lot today. Um, does that help crystallize any thoughts or or opinions at all? Um, yeah, I think it does for me. Um, you know, like it was good to kind of hear them talk uh, and like elaborate on manifestos um, or not or, you know, like in and kind of give their opinions. And it was interesting to hear them kind of talk in and about, you know, like it was as their manifestos are kind of written in silo. So it's good to kind of have some like feedback between each other, you know, like so it, it kind of gives me and hopefully some of the listeners, you know, like or viewers out there the how they're going to interact as a board, you know, like, so, you know, whether you're voting and, you know, like if, if I presume one or more of these are going to be elected to the board, um, you know, there is that possibility that they don't, you know, uh, but they all seem that they're passionate about it and, and hope they get elected, but, you know, like they'll still be passionate and do their part um, if they're not. Um, so, yeah, you know, like it's good. And I, I think that it's good to see some passionate individuals, you know, like, and yeah, like Leon said, it's a little disappointing that out of, what five, you know, this is what 1%, five people out of 500. Yeah. I, I think you know? it's probably less than that, actually. If you look at look at the numbers, it's probably a little bit less. Probably one in about, it's probably about five in seven to 800, I suspect. Yeah. But yeah, you know, like, so, you know, it's every, everyone has time, you know, limited time on their hands and, you know, like all of those other priorities and like that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm utterly grateful that there are these people who've put their hands up, mm. you know, like who are running yeah. for these positions. Yeah. And so, you know, like I thank everyone for running, you know, unfortunately there is one contested one. So theoretically at least one, but hopefully, you know, like we'll kind of see how this all shakes out. And honestly, I, I want to see what the members, the, the members vote with, you know, like the idea that mm. we are 500 strong now, when I first started with N in NZDG a decade ago, we were 120 strong, 130 strong. So the fact that, you know, like we're almost four or five times that, you know, like that I care about the community, you know, like, as I always have, it's why I ran a nationals, you know, like I care about everyone who comes and everyone who shows up in any way that you want to play, whether you want to compete, whether you want to do a women's global league, whether you want to do a local league, whether you just want to play casually or have fun with your family because you keep discs in the car, you know, like I want you to have you your say and I want you to choose you know, like what you want to see the future of NZDG, you know, like, and we have some passing individuals who, you know, like have their manifestos and, and will leave their mark or not leave their mark all depending on, you know, if we can hold them accountable or not 12 months from now. Um, so yeah, you know, like I was good. I, I think this conversation was great. I think if anyone's on the fence and, you know, like wants to know more, I think rewatching this would be great, you know, like and, and tune into a segment of, I don't know whether I want to vote for Chris or Andrew or Bray or, or Leon. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, like I, I think we had some good discussion tonight. How do you feel? Yeah, look, I, I, I first of all want to say thank you so much to everybody who who comes, who's come on the show tonight, whether, whether, whether your, whatever your own personal opinion um is on any of the people who have been on the show tonight whether you know them or not or whether you're ambivalent to them or not or whether you don't like them or not um it it really it, it really does take a, a a degree of commitment to put yourself forward um and and we thank you for 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 doing that it's uh you know lots of people haven't myself included right um and so it's uh it's it's important um, that that's that that's recognised. Um, I'm a little bit clearer. I haven't voted yet, actually. Um, I, I I haven't voted 
um, I've done that. I will say um, we're going to go through some of the formality stuff now. So have a listen up because this is this is important. You have until seven o'clock on Tuesday, seven o'clock next Tuesday to put your vote in. Now, you will have been sent an email. The email arrived to me at seven o'clock on the 12th of June. So that was last Sunday, seven o'clock on last Sunday. Uh, and I got a email that was called Vote Now New Zealand Disc Golf 2022 Annual General Meeting. There's a link there to uh, an uh, election buddy. Follow that link and you can make your votes. Now, Rebecca asks, um, what happens if an uncontested candidate does not get a majority yes vote? And this can happen, right? With each of the votes, with the um, exception of outreach, we'll get to that in a moment, with each of the uh, roles, you have the option to either vote yes Either vote no or abstain. Now, if you vote yes, you're saying, yes, I want this person to, to come in and do the, the role. If you're voting no, you're saying, I, I don't want this person to come in and do the role. If you abstain, you're kind of saying, meh, right? Um, and so make be very careful about what decision you make um, on each of those. When it comes to the um, outreach, you have a choice between Chris, Shyla, and abstain. So you can choose which of the candidates you like. Um, I, go do some background checks, read their manifestos, and, and make that decision. Or again, you can abstain. If um, an uncontested candidate does not get a majority yes, then they are not elected to that position. Now, if that was to happen, and I, actually, I don't know what comes next, to be honest. <laughs> uh, if that was to happen for a position such as chair, and let's be honest, that's probably the key one here, right? That's that's probably the key one. Then, uh, I, I don't know, actually. What what does happen? Do, um, uh, do we know? Well, it depends. So, like, do arguably just, with this... Do it again and, and look for more people and we go through this process again or what? Yeah, what so do? as far as I know, and I, I would have to read because I know that Paul... Paul, uh, Paul Deacon, um, who's mm -hmm. the current president of like Christchurch Disc Golf, I believe helped uh, and was pretty instrumental in writing the New Zealand Disc yeah. Golf uh, yes, Constitution. Yeah. And so the idea of looking into that. So the idea of if some board members are elected, there's the possibility that they may amongst themselves um, mm -hmm. select who would take over chair, just like the idea that no one ran for treasurer or secretary. So the idea that amongst the board, they would choose those positions. Yeah. It'd be the yeah. same for chair. And whether or mm -hmm. not that that would be a permanent thing or whether that would be a like temporary thing of like, oh, you know, like they're the interim president until we extend elections and have another yeah. one or or that I kind of stuff. Right. I think that's right. And as as for the secretary and treasurer roles, of course, there is the mechanism to call a, an SGM shortly after um, the elections to elect people who may um have uh, be interested given the, the the current state so in the the, the mechanism that, that leon um mentioned with secretary and treasurer of course that those positions still go to vote to the public so people sort of get a say um in what in what happens there um <clears throat> look the way that we can move forward here is for people to vote um Hopefully you've heard some things today that have uh, that have that have helped you make up your mind. Please take the time to go into the go into your email. It takes two seconds to put your votes in and hit submit. You've got until Tuesday, Tuesday at seven o'clock. Many of you will have done it already. Um, and uh, if you're like me, you could, you've waited until tonight so you could hear from people before making your decision. Um, but please make sure you do vote. Um, on um, before next Tuesday. And don't forget that um, any children over the age of 13 are allowed to vote. Okay, so this could be their first experience of democracy. Um, so uh, please, parents, if you've got a child who's over the age of 13, afford them that opportunity to experience democracy in action and uh, get them to do their research, watch the show, uh, make up their own decision, explain what they're voting for and uh, and, and help them along the way. It, it's uh, it, it really is key to getting people engaged is to, uh, you know, if you've always been voting since you were 13, you're way more likely to vote again. And, uh, you know, that's 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 I think how we uh, how, how we end up with a good outcome. Um, right. What else do we need to go on uh, to the AGM is next Wednesday. 
It's um, the AGM is seven o'clock on Wednesday night, I believe. Is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah. Yeah. Seven, seven o'clock Wednesday. on Wednesday night. Um, uh, but voting closes on Tuesday at seven o'clock. Uh, now, there will be a period of time to vote at the AGM. So if you can't make it to the um, if you if you aren't able to vote beforehand or you forget or whatever, then you can still um, you, you can still uh, uh, vote at the AGM. Um, that's a little bit more of a uh, it's not as easy as just clicking a button on an email. It, it's a little bit more tricky than that. Um, but yes, hopefully, hopefully, majority of people will have done that. AGM watch party. Um, well, <laughs> that's my kind of party, I tell you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Only, only, yeah, okay. Um, maybe, maybe. Uh, no, let's, um, we will, however, on Thursday. Sorry. I'll bring the tea. You bring the tea, indeed. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the Thursday night, next Thursday's show will be our um, live reaction show to what has happened on the Wednesday mm. night, um, and we'll 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 try and figure out what's happened, and maybe we'll um we'll we'll have some guests on, or indeed we might just talk about disc golf a bit more. How about that, um, sure. <laughs> uh, Brady? Any anything else to finish off with? Uh, no, get amongst it. Um, you know, like have a vote, have your say, you know, like this is your choice to choose. Uh, you know, like if you're going to sit there and complain about the tour, about events, about NZDG, about the board, uh, and you don't vote, I, I'm not, you have no right to complain. Um, this is your choice to, to make a change. This is your time to, like Leon said, you know, like put your money where your mouth is, uh, you know, like show up, vote. Uh, you know, like, and, and choose how you want this organization to go forward. We are a national body. Each one of us makes up that national body. So each one of us gets to have a say, you know, like have yours. Totally. Um, excellent. Okay. Well, look, I shall, uh, I shall see many of you at the AGM next Wednesday. I'm sure. Um, and if not, we'll see you um, next Thursday. Um, but wherever you're playing disc golf, take it easy. Play well, get some birdies, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.